So here are the baby eastern diamondbacks as we found them. These guys are Crotalus adamantius, or some people say adamantius, whichever you prefer. Here is mama. And you can also see, or you may have seen a minute ago, some infertile eggs. Um, we call them slugs typically, but they're those kind of yellowish globs. And those are just eggs that did not get fertilized. And our general plan with pit vipers and with some vipers, depending on how long they stay with their babies, is we will actually leave the babies in the enclosure with the female until they shed for the first time. But you can see there's a lot of goo in there. So we typically will clean it out and we'll let them stay with the mother until they shed. So we'll clean it here in a minute and then we'll put them back in there and let them hang out with mom for a few days, sometimes up to a week until they shed for the first time. And here you can see we've cleaned everything out so they've got a nice place to kind of hang out and they will absorb the rest of their yolk. So just like in the wild, the babies are born with a pretty decent supply of yolk. So they have a nice first meal and they hang out with their mother. In the wild, this helps to keep them safe because the mother is certainly a deterrent for many predators. And in captivity, we've discovered that the babies just tend to start off a little bit better if we let them stay with their mother. And then once they've shed, we're going to separate them. And so here's Brock taking the female out of the enclosure and he's gonna secure her in this can. There we go. And then he will uh, individually take each baby out and get it set up in its own uh, new little box. So he's going to use a smaller hook for this since the babies are small. It's a lot easier to do with a little tiny hook on a little tiny snake. And he's probably just looking to see exactly how many there are there. And then we have these small enclosures set up for them. And we'll get them feeding and get them established in these little enclosures. So there you can get an idea of the size difference between the female and the baby. And now he'll be getting the second one out. And while you're doing this, you do have to be really aware of where each baby is. So you always get the ones in the front out first and then kind of move towards the back. This one is on the move, so it's not wanting to stay on the hook too well. There we go. And just like with any working with any animal, but especially any animal that's potentially dangerous, you just always have to be patient, and this one here also is not real cooperative, um, but there's no rush. There's no reason to hurry. Brock is just going to wait until he gets it nicely balanced on the hook, and then once he does, there we go. He'll be able to move it to its new home. Very basic. And here's how they're set up at the beginning. You don't want an enclosure for a juvenile to be too large because you want to make sure that they will easily encounter the food when we introduce it and that they can feel secure. And these guys, even though they're fairly small, they actually will start out on fuzzy or hopper mice. So the last shot is just one having a meal. Thanks for watching and remember if you enjoy our videos, like and subscribe to see more.